So today, I'm 500 metres above sea level. I'm in the hills and mountains of the massive Lesterel, just outside the beautiful village of Seon. Now, Seon was, for the last 12 years of his life, the home of the great surrealist painter Max Ernst. So today, I'm going to take you on a tour of the beautiful village, and my friend Callum, aged nine and a half, is going to take you on a tour of the Max Ernst Museum and tell you what he thinks of the great surrealist painter. Don't go anywhere, and please, please, please subscribe by hitting the button down in the corner of the screen. Let's go! Seon is 45 miles east of Nice. The village of 2,669 people, most of whom are related. I made that bit up. But it regularly makes the list of France's most beautiful villages. But does it live up to the hype? We met up with our art critic Callum and his sister Jessie to tour the village and decide. wonderfully preserved like me even if it does contain quite a lot of second homes these days and at the risk of coming across all hyacinth bouquet it's not jammed with knick-knack shops and it regularly hosts cultural events like the annual musique cordial festival or it did before the plague came along It also has some highly regarded restaurants like this one with its attractive location and chef. And this one, the glory hole of my father. Or at least that's what Mr. Boo said the translation was. This was one of the most beautiful locations I've ever eaten in. It was more like a film set than a film set. And the food was cracking. Callum ordered frog's legs as his starter and he quickly put them to work dancing in the frog chorus. Mr. Boo had a tartar de tuna. Get him. And Halloween sniffed it all out to make sure it was up to her exacting standards. And then it was time for the main course, Anglet de Boeuf, with two rather beautifully cooked potatoes, some aubergine and some broccoli. Delicious. But then Callum got to the best bit, the pudding, which seemed to inspire him to become a monster in the vein of one of Max Ernst's most famous paintings. Coincidence? I think not. And then Mr. Boo noticed something. It was the actual glory hole of Mon Pere. Anyway, lunch and tasteless gag out the way, Callum led us off to the Max Ernst Museum, which is located in the house where he spent the last 12 years of his life. It was an intriguing decision to have ended up in this remote village given the colourful life he'd led up to then. Ernst was married four times. He was famously involved in a menage a trois with the French poet Paul Elwar and his wife Gala, as in Durham Miners. And he was even at one stage married to the great eccentric art collector Peggy Guggenheim, who used to regularly walk round Venice with 14 dogs. When asked why she married him, she said it was because he was beautiful and famous. The marriage didn't last. She was both an art addict and a sex addict. Imagine that. 
But eventually the great surrealist tired of the wild life and the high life and he settled here with his fourth wife, Dorothea Tannin, where they led a much quieter existence, painting and playing bulls in the village square. I think being a surrealist, Max would have approved of us having to view his exhibition wearing masks. He'd probably preferred it if we'd been riding bikes at the same time, but you can't have everything. It was a cute museum, the sort where you have to turn the lights on yourself as you go around. Callum was quick to begin his critique. This one looks like a bird of hot dogs, Callum. As he pointed out, these were all abstract penguins. This must have been Ernst penguin phase. No, it's a pigeon. Apart from that one, which was a pigeon. In this room, Mr. Boo spotted a dog that looked like Halloween sniffing another dog's bottom. That's Halloween. Yeah. Good job we hadn't taken Halloween into the museum. She might have been triggered. Don't you think he has a bit of a look of a young Melvin Bragg? The big one is the mouth. And so what he did, you can see how it's all kind of splattered into bits. Look, see, that there, there, there's different parts with different colours. So maybe it, he tried, it's a mad scientist thing. Then it was time to head to Max's bedroom and take a look at his famous cage bed. One of these sold recently at Sotheby's for 56 grand. Callum was particularly intrigued by the mirror. What was it for? For a moment I feared I was going to have to veer into very difficult territory, but then I realised it was a way of looking at the strange painting on the back wall. Apparently the screen on the right is called Le Grand Ignorant. I'm saying note. Callum was more interested in this hole in the floor. He had a theory about what it was. I'm afraid I decided that it was probably something more prosaic. Well, they didn't have toilets at that time, so they like would have a chamber pot and then they would pour away the poo-poo and pee-pee. Yeah. Poo-poo and pee-pee? I think the wine from lunch was getting to me. Ernst was heavily into frottage, you know. Stop giggling at the back, it's not what you think, that's an artistic term. It essentially means you're doing a rubbing. It's the opposite of grattage, which is what you do to a scratch card. Or scraping, which is what you do to the bottom of a barrel. But then Callum spotted his mum in the town square. It was time to cut loose on Max Ernst. I rather fell in love with Seon. I've seen more village purchases than I've had hot dinners, but there's something about this one. It's quiet, it's beautiful. Dare one say it, it's a bit classy. 45 miles from Nice. If you fancy a trip with a difference, get yourself up there.